Hello everyone, welcome to the Squid Junction. It is I, Mad Gamer the Second, and I am joined by the one and only Ryan. How are you doing tonight, my friend? Yes, that is me, Ryan Nectar, in the house! And of course, we're gonna try and get this Squid Junction going. We're at the turnabout. What can you give us today? Well, for our first match, we have Girls' Night versus Wi Fi Problems. That, that is quite the mashup to be starting out with. I am excited to see what these teams bring to the table. Mm, that's right. So today with Girls' Night Wi Fi Problems, they've already got into their match, and this is going to be our map choices for today. We have Flat Zones, Tower Control into Clan Blitz. The maps are all on the screen right now, so you know, feel free to speculate a little bit. But as for our players, who is not on the screen, let me give you a rundown of the teams and who is playing. For Girls' Night, we have Rose, Star, Sylphie, C, and Fluffy. And on the other side of the spectrum here on Wi-Fi Problems, we have WP Wi-Fi, uh, Sherbert, Mudkip, Puniki, and Cole. So, who's going to be coming on the roster is anyone's guess. <laughs> well, you know, you never can let any Wi-Fi Problems ruins on, on a good girls' night out, but you know what? We'll have to see if that holds true. Zones Flounder, though, that is uh, one of the most, I think, more controversial map mode combinations. You certainly see a lot of unique comps coming out for it. Um, this is funny, though, because I think just about... Let me see, this is like eight, eight nine hours ago, this map was on rotation on uh, Anarchy, and I was playing it. Oh god, it was terrible! I hope you guys are going to have fun with this, though. It's going to be quite chaotic coming in. And uh, I don't know about you, but I am hoping to see the Splatana make its way out again, especially with the Zipcaster Burst Bomb setup. It's going to be oh, a very yes. chaotic way to go in and do damage. So, what, what do you got for us, though, Matt? I mean, yeah, definitely the Splatana class uh, shines pretty well on this map. We do see the, uh, the Stamper, as you said, and then also the new Wiper deck of Beacons and Missiles. You know, Missiles for right. the zone and the Beacons for just getting in around because it is a pretty large map overall especially with the verticality so having those beacons can be nice yeah you're exactly right on that uh but another thing i want to note is as well is the rapid blaster deco this time uh running with the torpedoes at ninja is also something that we can mm. really look to you know leverage off with the height as well i mean let's just say you're at the corner of the map here you're going to try enter into zones Pop that inkjet and run in with it. You're going to jump back into a safe spot anyways, and you still have the leverage of a very strong special working with you, and torpedoes to seek your enemies just before. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was actually seeing some nice uh, rapid deco earlier today, and it was... It is fun, it's a fun weapon to play and fun weapon to watch, but I think also sloshers, both the try and vanilla variants, are a favorite for this map, once again, just because of verticality, the... Being able to just slosh over the ledges and hold defense, but also being able to get up the walls. Super handy. Oh, ho, ho, you caught my attention with that try slosher right there. I definitely love to see that happening soon. I mean, no exceptions to the machine as well with its little uh, arc that you got that right there. And the Booyah Bomb being a very exceptional tool to, you know, create space and take control of a little area that they have for splat zones. But... Do you have any weapons you're looking forward to? Because I am certainly interested of in seeing the S Blast 92. One of the new weapons coming to it, I feel. Oh yes, I, I, I'm always looking forward to that new blaster scene in play. But you know what, I, I would love to see some. I'm always down to see some heavy splatling play. You know, with the Wavebreaker, it is such a good defensive tool because when most, or most of the time when you throw a wave breaker down, the enemy has a chance to just jump over the the different waves coming at you, but if you're trying to get up the walls, like, there's nowhere to jump over, you're just tagged immediately, so it's good for just right. calling people out, especially if you're going up against a tri slasher, because both the tri, and even a carbon roller, being able to just get around the flank, going through, like, that valley there, it's like, it's, you gotta be on your guard the whole time. I mean, also speaking of the Rapid Blaster Deco, I think another weapon that would really shine in this case, uh, especially since we are going to be fighting in very tight corners, would be the Range Blaster. Wave Breaker, I mean, mm. as I said, just popping it on top of the towers here, there is no way that you can exactly avoid it on your way up, and honestly, that might be one of the biggest grabs, uh, my biggest grabs coming into this, if they actually bring it on. But we're looking at the comms now, and, you know, we've got something going, we got something going. Ooh, so we're seeing both variants of Tetris, a nice little Tetra match up here. We got the Dark Tetras on the one side, and then Wi-Fi problems running the Light Tetras, the new Tetras with the Zipcaster. So not quite the stamper, but, you know, some of the same properties. 
I mean, we also got these Viper as well, like you were saying, right? And like, that's something you did call out, and we're gonna see how that plays a part into it. They've already got their first splat all the way down, and now moving in for you, the duck that just really making their way out, but losing their anchor in the process, and that's not gonna look good. No, not all. Like, the anchor is as it's just the anchor, it keeps your team locked in place, but what, taking that down first just opens up so many avenues, and it seems like Girls Knight is having trouble getting into the zone. Wi Fi problems having a nice hold of the. The high ground here and so like th that's really what you want to see for zones like once you get that lockout up top like it is incredibly difficult for the other team to move in but the tetras are still gonna make a sh stab at it anyway well here we go the ink strikes coming in twinkies almost out of the zone here and moving back in slowly the inkjet are losing a lot of time on their shell but trying to make some headway here but no still fish showing why a charger is going to be quite a devastation here and wi <laughs> is now knocked out on the side of still fish. and this is now ladies night as they are pushing in for the next zone hoping to reclaim what they can right now Sherbert the only one left on the point here is just holding back off and they are unfortunately not able to keep it I think it's a nice matchup going back to the anchor selection. You know, we have the ball point, the tried and true, pretty darn strong in this current meta, but then the ZNF charger, though, was pretty anticipated when it first released. It hasn't been seen as most action, but I feel like Flounder Heist is a nice place for it to do so, because, again, the, just the range and the high ground play so well for it. The Ink Strike as well, just being good for zones, but we already see Girls Knight keeping that, keeping that position. Like, they have the lead now, and so far, Wi-Fi Problems has not been able to move back in. Honestly, yeah, you're exactly right on that, as we are going to see once again as how they move in is the very key thing that allows Wi-Fi problems to have a, such a devastating time going against them. They're not having a few day on this one, and honestly, look at how Sylvie just commands the zone, holding out every single corner with the charger here is not looking good. Look, as Sherbert tries to make his way into the zip castle, he's unfortunately knocked out just like that and losing another opportunity, while slowly it takes down to Girls' Night side as we have 5, 4, 3, 2, oh! Ooh, Twinkie holding it back for the team and unfortunately just close. I mean like that split second really got me going there, but man, I don't know what you I, I was really hoping that it would happen. Yeah, it was surely close. Like the Inkjet came in and did what Inkjet does, took out took out the back line, got the pick that it needed, but just unfortunately it couldn't paint the zone quite as well, so uh, Girls Knight was able to solidify that victory and just keep hold of the zone for the last remaining points that they needed. Alright, with one point up for Girls Night though, can they really hold this back down? I mean, they've got definitely something going for them when they went into this, but now with Tower, you know, the one thing I do find a big issue is that, you know, Sylphie might be able to hold down areas with the Charger, you know, locking them out by getting this giant little line of ink. You know, cut them off from the team essentially. But. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Girls Knight is in a weird position when it comes, especially to this map of all things? And having a tower to block Sylphie's line of fire. It's going to be a little bit interesting how they move on with this, right? I did see a ballpoint plan coming just now, and maybe this time they want to play around turf more? Question mark? Yeah, that's a tough choice. I mean, like, for tower control, just backlines uh, do so well here, because like either they're riding the tower or they're able to keep... I think the high ground for this map in particular, like, if they're either whether defending or attacking like if they're able to get up on that snipe the charger can certainly do a lot of damage i think also just try strikes is like the the next stage it's of booyah bomb go to right? lock it down yeah exactly yeah and that's the other thing though like i did mention zip castle and then this map is especially wonderful for it i mean look at the amount of like high points you can like just zip use your zip castle and like zip across to just to create a momentum and space for a team and be a giant menace mm-hmm uh, yeah, it's, it's, that is definitely something you gotta watch out for. It's like they will be going for that backline 100%. I think the other weapon that I will be looking forward to is the. I wanna say. GooTuber. And like, you know what? That's me coping. That's me coping. I have a feeling that it's a weapon that needs to be explored. And this might be the game. I am looking forward to it. Now we didn't see the the. That was disbelief there, man. That was disbelief there. <laughs> the hesitation in those words. Hey, hey, I, I'm I'm full on board with it. I am fully on board with it. Okay, okay. You know what? I'll hold, I'll hold, I'll hold you on to that. I'll hold you on to that. I don't think we're gonna see it this round though. But if we do, if we do, uh, and I am completely destroyed here. My heart is broken. My day is immeasurable. Oh no. 
Rip. All right. Seem... Oh, I see the Dark Touchers have been swapped out for the Light Touchers. We're going in with that Zipcaster you were talking about before. Right. I mean, we, I didn't mention with all the high points here, it's really easy to go in. So, you know, no surprise there. But as it stands now, it definitely looks like ink power wise. It is going to the side of Wi-Fi problems and they slowly make their way in. But Sylphie is not going to give any ground as they so push this back all the way in into the tower. And now they're trying to make their way over. Maki is in the corner here trying to make something work. But it's a little bit walled off here as Wi-Fi and Sherbert makes their ascent forward against Sylphie. And unfortunately, he's going to go for two for one here. And this means Sylphie is able to go in strike and clear out the area with the help of Star to just wipe everyone else out. Man, that charger though, like, your, your whole goal is to be able to hit your shots, and they've been hitting their shots. Man, like, we saw the two coming in from the flank. One got taken down by the Tetras, the other got by the Charger, and so now they're already on their last checkpoint before the KO. Wi-Fi Problems able to stop them before they're able to chew through it too much and take some ground in mid, but Girls Knight going through a pretty early push. Oh, that's beautifully done by Sherba, just zipping back and forth with the Tetras here, and this makes such an amazing fight coming in. He knows the spin, knows that he cannot just randomly approach it, and bit by bit, they're able to make an inch forward. Returning favor back to the center, Wi-Fi problems is now going to have to make a lot of problems for the side of Girls Life if they want to make any hit space with that 33 point lead. Oh, oh, and here we go. Thing. Oh, was that a, yeah, was that yeah. a scamper throw? Yeah, the stamper was just popped and thrown immediately. I'm not really sure why, but uh, you know what? Good on them. They're able to hold their point and their uh, ground down here and allow their team to regroup moving in. Unfortunately, being locked out just like that is not where you want to be as now all they need to do is sit on that point here and push the tower. And this is it. And Wi-Fi goes down once again. And we do see an issue with that. They're losing members bit by bit, straggling forth. Twinkie is now going to go down as well. No! Star is just going back and forth. The Zipcast are running away. ASAP not giving them any headways to move and Star returns to the fight finding Wi-Fi but not any mark going down for the count. Oh that was just a distraction they needed. They are slowly interesting way back towards that checkpoint, but they do lose their ends up in the process, so currently at a disadvantage here. Oh and then the charger going down, that's gonna spell the end of that push. But at least Wi-Fi was still two members down, so like they don't really have a good chance of Getting that solid push, and the Tetra's just coming right back, like, they don't even have backup, they're just going straight in, keeping this push alive. Alright, and they definitely make it hard here, Star, again on that Zipcaster, going Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a Zipcaster can. And of course, now it's moved in bit by bit, they're able to just make their way out, they take the tower down to 24 this time, and now Wi-Fi problem has more than just Wi-Fi problems, they have an issue with how many points they have to just go back and forth with them. And this is not looking good for, of course, the Wi-Fi problems. As, look, the tower control here, looking in favor of Wi-Fi problems, but I don't see a headway, a way they can go in. Deco, uh, sorry, the Wiper is now holding on to the special, waiting for opportunity to go in, as Kuniki is going with the inkjet, trying to grab something, but again, nothing is going down. They're able to buy time, but that's not what they need. They need to get splats here in order to push forward even more. As they lose another member of the team, it looks very dangerous to just go in alone. Tower is lost, Sherba is trying to go in and find his mark here, yeah, and he does with Star going in out of the count, and now he's able to just push him bit by bit, which is great, but Inkstrike just holding him back, not giving him anything. Sherba, do your thing! Zip, zip, he's going across the Spider-Verse, so to speak, and now we're gonna see how he's gonna pick off one at a time, as the whole team is now back in favor, I don't know how to tell you, but it's looking like an uphill battle from here on out. Sherba is doing so much work to get this push going, like they are keeping um, Girls Knight down to two members, like they're, they're able to take down the uh, opposing Wait, Tetris, and that's just huge. That is yeah, huge I mean, right there. That is huge indeed, it's just pushing it non-stop, Wi-Fi is just taking a field trip right here, and with the Tetris on this as well, not getting any space to move, and they try to cover them, that kind of just cleans it out. There is no problem here other than that Wi-Fi, as they're able to steam the rest of the way through into a knockout. I think that, that was the key right there. It's like the Sherbert was able to get in and start doing a wreck some havoc as the opposing Tetras were, and just shutting down the other Tetras was what allowed them to really get that push going. Because between the ends up and Tetra combos, like just sheer aggression the whole time. So just putting a stop to that opened up so much room for them to be able to move in and just take their own space. Honestly, right? Wi Fi Problems took a page out of Star's book. Right? They saw Star from Girls Night going with the Zipcaster and they were like... 
I'm gonna do what you're doing, it seems to work. And immediately as they do that, we do see a complete switch in how they were able to approach the fights and how they were able to take people out just left and right, just like that. There was no way they can really contest that once they knew the strategy, but uh, Clan Blitz now is the mode where it really comes down to an uh, entire team, uh, teamwork, so to speak, right? And I wanna see whether they can pull it off because this time, there's no fancy tricks on this map, I would like to say. Yeah, there is zip caster opportunities, but like, really you don't have a lot of space here. I think it's much better to run something along the lines of a Booyah Bomb compared to Ink Strike and a Crab as well to just create space. So, yeah, it's absolutely. going to really come down to it, right? I, what do you think? I, I was gonna say, like, with Girls Knight taking the opening lead in that last game, they had double Ink Strike. So, with the Charger and then the Neo Splash, they were, they potentially could have just held on if they played a solid defense, but it was the fact that their Tetras and their ends up went down to the other Tetras that they couldn't maintain that lead or just maintain that defense. And so going into Clan Bliss, like you, that strategy doesn't really work as well. I think as you said, they need like a Booyah Bomb or maybe even Inkjet rather than the Tri-Strike. So I feel like if Wi-Fi problems were able to beat them at Tower Control, they certainly have a good advantage going into this next one, running that Ballpoint and Tetra Duo. Right, right, you, you are mentioning the ballpoint, and that's, I think, something I totally lack. I mean, wow, right. Ballpoint creating so much space as well with the range is going to give them a very good shot at moving in with uh, Clan Blitz. They wouldn't re exactly need the crab to, you know, push their uh, turf control up a notch here. But then again, it really stands to see how they want to make this work. And while Tenta Missiles isn't exactly the best thing in the world when it comes to Clan Blitz, I would like to say that the amount of distraction it gives might be worth running it just because, um, you know, spread the team out a little bit, give them a little bit of a headache here and just pick them off bit by bit, which is something in Wi-Fi problems, um, their comp itself have a lot of uh, experience in, I would like to say. Right, exactly. Like, the missiles, it'll displace them from where you don't want them to be. So, like, if they're set up right in that choke point, which that is pretty much the only viable way to get to the basket. Like, they're forced to move, and that just creates that opening that you need to open up the basket. And then if you follow it up with, like, the Inkjet or maybe the uh, Zipcaster, it is like you can just pick them off while they're trying to run away. Right, right. So, let's just see what is going, what is cooking at the back here as we do. We are waiting for one more play, I think. Just give it a short moment here before we go into Clan Blitz right now. And I... Uh, I'm not sure why they're going back and forth on switching their weapons, but I can give you a rough idea what they're going for. Would you like to see what they're going for? Oh, never mind. You don't have to. You don't have to hear from me anymore. You can just watch it on screen. They're moving into it. Here we go. This is match point coming in for Clan Blitz. Clan Blitz on scorch board. What we're gonna see coming out here? Oh, she's gonna stick with the. Oh, Z oh we, got match point. we got the thing. I I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm just very excited when it comes to match point. Just just. Go of it. <laughs> no worries, no worries. But they are bringing a, a junior alongside that, so going for like an ends up junior combo, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna see how this plays out right now, but I do really love the ends up coming in as a more of a support type weapon here, allowing them to just continue to hunker down their point here, not pushing their lead, but also not exactly giving up any kind of space here. So they can inch their way forward bit by bit, as we do see Fluffy coming in really strong and trying to make some headways here, but um, is really getting caught off as now he's completely wiped off Fluffy. I think it's gone, but manages to jump back. Ooh, that is nasty. So Nikki with the Kraken as well, just trying to make some space here with Market, and they are very close to that power clan here. All they need to do is just Hunker down a little bit more, grab some space with turf control, and then go in. They've got everything set up and lined up, but Wi-Fi problems is just not willing to commit it right now. Nah, oh, that's gonna be a delay two down off of Wi-Fi problems. You know, Girls Night has a lot of paint and a lot of space to be able to do stuff. And the Charger <laughs> moving in, being aggressive, they do get taken down by the Splatling, but there's just the fact that they're able to set up in mid is huge for um, Girls Night here, because like that creates so much space that they can work with. You'll feel woken something in me with that one, and I really gotta tell you, Switch Jungle is looking really good at the moment. They're giving me some games that I like to see. Twin Nikki is holding down the power climb here, and as well, the other side, both sides holding a power climb. They just need to make one good push here in order to make it work. And let's look at Special's economy here, as we do see two on the side of Wi Fi problems. One popped off with the Kraken and not making any space come down. Reef is popped, but nothing is working out as Kraken slowly, bit by bit, moves his way back, picks everything up, and now they're able to make a hoorah to the point here 
and they're still able to make it work. Wi-Fi Problem is doing really well here, but uh, they're not making anything out of it. That's the biggest issue I have right now. They are not converting their splats into gold. They're not converting anything that they got off from that entire skirmish. Yeah, it's like the, the amount of resources that used to just take mid back, like leaves them. They don't really have anything left to take over take the basket and like it's so hard to push in without those kind of resources and Gross Knight just are able to move back in they took down one of the members and they down a, a power climb too and now Gross Knight is just sitting on the front doorstep with some tri strikes well and they're able to slowly push in the barrier is broken Wi-Fi is going to go down though for a trade but they still have the deco wiper on standby here trying to make something work I keep calling the wiper deco but bit by bit they're slowly pushing in point passing 50 here Shabba just needs to drop that ball in as and when with the team later on if they want to make a surprising comeback here after this wipe. Now, of course, the pseudo wipe isn't going to exactly help them that much until the barrier is back up. And now that it is, let's see how they can create space here. As now, look at the turf control right now. I think it's on the side of Girls' Night, but bit by bit, it is slowly coming back over. And they're able to make a push. Shabba is slowly coming back on, trying to make a play here, but bit by bit, jumping off the cliff and just keeping it up. Rose and Star are the only ones left, and they are able to hold them back. But 2-2 two to two is a pretty okay deal here, I would say. Yeah, but as we were seeing before, like, even when Wi-Fi problems had all the space, all the paint, it's just like they weren't able to convert it into, like, an actual push. We do see the Kraken coming here, and they do have the Power Clump coming in. They're able to get two of the Power Clumps in, but it's not quite enough for the lead. They are still down two of their members, and with two remaining members of Girls' Night up, that's probably going to cause them to have to pull out and just leave it at that. Yeah, but at the very least, they've got something going now, and it's not the end of the world here. They're at least pushing the score back, they're 22 away, but they've got something going, and honestly, Wi-Fi problems, now their headaches are a little bit lesser here. And of course, that just means all they have to do is another good push. I mean, they've already successfully done it once, what is to say they can't do it again? Yes, indeed, but they only have a minute left to do it, so not... Not the end of the world here, that we do see another Kraken coming in, getting a Ooh. double right there! That is huge! I mean, the, the, there's just the, all the heavy going ham on this uh, base right here, just completely taking over the basket, but they don't they don't have anyone to follow up, their power climbs down, there's no one to jump in, they're just left standing there, and now already, Girls Knight is going to be going in trying to get a push of their own. Yeah, that's a beautiful monster coming with a Kraken, and I don't mind. As they push in here, Sherbert is going to try and make some hit space, going into the midpoint and make something work, while the rest of Team Gold Knight are trying to regroup here. They have Special Economy coming up for Wi-Fi problems. They have one good chance to make a push here as they pop one out. The Kraken is going to pop out with the Crab, and this is going to be it. They're going to try and make space as Muckip is now down for the count. The Chizuka trying to break in bit by bit, and they're able to break the barrier, but they have to score in 22 points, which is at least 11 times plus one if they want to win. And slowly inching forward, the try strike extra is not going to let it go, and they take the lead. Slean and simple. Slean and simple. You know what? Slean and simple. I said it. I said it. I'm not going to regret what I said. That was insane. They, they, even in the face of all the try strikes and specials getting thrown over, they're still able to like, maintain control enough to get those clamps and like. Just the Kraken was doing so much work around that basket. We saw the last minute pick and just, wow. Why for problems taking the third game for the set? Oh, for the set, yeah. They took it for the set. I, I thought you were going to say more there. I really should have paid attention to it. But yes, they did take it for the set. I'm going to be honest here. I was kind of hoping Ghost Knight won. I had like a few jokes lined up for that. <laughs> you know, I was going to be like, it's late, it's night. And they got the feelings right, cause it's late 80s night or what a night, and yeah, I, I guess Wi-Fi problems won. Uh, I, I don't have anything for you guys, but uh, well, uh, you know, um, leave it to Wi-Fi problems to uh, kill a good ladies' night. You know what? Let's roll that. I think that's a better joke than I'll ever make one for tonight at the moment. So we'll see what we got going. Wi-Fi problem. GG's to you, girls' night. Y'all did fantastic. Unfortunately, this is where it cuts off for you guys at the moment, but. Let's just see how they move in. Of course, talking about that though, I think running Kraken is such a fantastic uh, point to note because uh, I think one thing people don't realize sometimes is that Kraken is a... It, it can sub as a pseudo short range weapon, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you needed a Slayer type weapon in the form of a tri slosher for example, or maybe a, uh, I don't know, a 10 attack spatter shot, just run the Kraken, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, free armor, essentially, <laughs> runs across the mat. Literally seeing it just puts fear in your face. I don't know what else you want. Well, we were talking about missiles being, like, the special that just makes a opponent move. Kraken on Scorch Gorge, like, you have one place that you want to get to. You have one area that you need to control for the objective. And the Kraken does such a good job in such a tight space of moving them out of the way. Like, you can not only go in for the picks, you can cause them to at least run away, and then also get the jumps in with your Paracom. So I think, like, getting that, uh, picking that for uh, Scorch Clans was an excellent choice. On one hand, it is a very smelly strategy. I mean, I've got to give it uh, give it credit where it's due. It is not fun being on the other end of that. But on the other hand, you have to give it to them. A strategy that works is not something they can come up and complain against. If it works, it works. You gotta learn how to deal with it. And honestly, I'm surprised that Girls Now was able to effectively hold them off for the first two times. And then it just kind of crumpled down there. Wi-Fi problems gave them real um, issue with that as they popped it off more and more slowly catching like the little the little mistakes they made and that really built up right there yeah i honestly thought like you know girls knight did the counter push while uh that heavy user was trying to push into their uh base there and they were able to get jumps in for the power clam but i was just like the, the ca they were able to wi-fi probably able to do the counter push right after that just caused them to get that final push for the victory so you no know, we'll have to see how they continue on with the brackets um, I feel like we're getting ready for our next matchup. Uh, we are. We are. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what round two is. I believe round two is, uh, uh, let me, let me think about it. It's, uh, 